Okay, sir, we are live on Get Set Up. I have made you the host. You can make me co-host now. Okay. All right, we should be good. Yeah, just to know how many people have booked for the class. I think about 11-ish, and I looked at all of the names, and they all looked good. Okay. Um, is it possible that you can send me the names of the participant? Uh -huh. If it is possible, then okay. Otherwise, no issue. Let me turn, let me see. Let me see if I can. I've not tried to copy that list before. Let me see. Yeah, Scott also had the problem with copying the, the list. Let me see. Okay. I might be able to do it here. Oh, let me click on learners first. Oh, it's not going to give me the whole list at one time is okay. the problem. Oh, uh, no, no worries. I know it's 11 people, so I will segregate them. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, um, 11. You want me to just read them to you real quick or no? Mm, uh, okay, you can. <laughs> okay, we have one minute. You know what? I know what I can do. Here, I know what I can do. I just figured it out. Uh, let me see. I'll do it to you. Okay, here we go. So we've got Danita. Oops, Danita. I'll just do first names, okay? Okay. And go over here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Some of these names I recognize, none of them look, you know, like suspicious. My worry is that they'll start using names that aren't suspicious. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank so, you. Good morning, Irene. How are you today? Hi, Irene. How are you today? I can I can see you and I can see that you're talking, but I can't hear you and you're not muted, which makes me think you're you might. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Now I can hear you. Great. Well, as we're waiting for people to come in, Irene, do you know how to crochet? Maybe she's not able to listen. Maybe not. I heard her voice. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me, Irene? So she's having some kind of trouble, Victor. I don't know if you're able to help her at all. I'm sending you a message. Okay, great. Right, I see. Oh, there we go. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Margaret. How are you today? Pretty good. How are you? Good, thank you. We're trying to get, I think Irene's having a little trouble hearing at this point. Um, oh, there she I'm is. Hi, you, you were even, okay, you got it. All right, as, as people are coming in, I'm just wondering if those of you that are here, if you know how to crochet? Yes. And, yes, um, and you know, and are you comfortable with reading patterns? Oh, no. No, okay, that's why you're here. How about you, Margaret? No, I took, I watched your first class on beginner crochet and, um, so I'm just, I think I'm going to need some um, hands-on help, but okay. I figured the more familiar I am with the terms and things, uh, I'll have a head start. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. And today, um, you know, I really am covering how to read the pattern. So there's right. a bit of an assumption that you know a little bit about crocheting um, and you're ready to take the next step. But if you, I, I think you're right. Sometimes there's no substitute for you know, some hands-on help with it. So mm -hmm. um, I'll go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to start doing the introduction. I do expect that there will be a few more people joining us. 
Um, so let me just get set up here. Can you see my screen? Okay. All right, so I'd like to welcome you to crochet pattern reading and yarn selection. Um, and uh, we'll be covering not, not the basics of how to crochet, but how to read a pattern so that you might take your next steps with crochet. Um, I'm Sarah, I'm your guide with Get Set Up. I uh, normally come to you from Everett, Michigan, but today I happen to be in Dayton, Ohio, uh, where my son lives. Uh, and they had uh, my granddaughter a little over a week ago, so I'm enjoying some grandma time. <laughs> um, she was five weeks early, four pounds, seven ounces, and came home from the hospital on time. So I'm a pretty happy grandma at this point. Um, uh, before I retired uh, from my elementary position, elementary principal's position, I was 22 years in education. Good morning, Vicki. Welcome. Um, and, um, and I spent two years of my career with uh, Michigan State University working with uh, schools that were falling behind in northern Michigan uh, academically. And that was certainly a highlight of my career. I love quotes. I think quotes can really guide us in our life. And this is one that has guided me for years. And that's people do the best they can with what they know. And when they know better, they do better. And what I love about that quote is I am a lifelong learner. I hope that I am able to learn something new until, the, until my days on this earth pass by. Um, and so in January, I'd been retired about six months and all the excitement of the holidays was over all the excitement was over and I was scrolling through my Facebook feed and I saw Get Set Up. And so I started taking classes on Get Set Up and I thought, wow, this is really awesome. Uh, their philosophy fits with mine. And so um, I just really have enjoyed becoming a guide and uh, doing what I love and that's sharing passion, my passion with other people. Uh, and, and mostly the majority of my classes are in the craft realm. So I, I'm really enjoying that. Um, get set up. What I like is uh, I can learn from you and you can learn from me. Um, and ideally, I can see when your cameras are on where that helps me, especially when I'm teaching crafts is if, if I'm introducing something, I, I watch your facial expressions and I can tell whether you're puzzled or whether you're getting it. And that helps me modify my teaching. So I, I love that when you have your cameras on. Um, but if you have them off, I certainly understand that's certainly okay. Um, after we get done, if you're a participant in the class, you can email help at getsetup.io and request a recording of the class and they'll send it to you in your email. What I like about that, especially in the craft realm, is if you miss something and you want to go back and review it, you can scroll to that part of the video and just watch that piece again. Um, if you're joining by live stream and we are live stream today, I'd like to welcome you. I'm glad you're glad you're with us. Um, however, if you would like to participate in a two-way conversation with the rest of us, hop on over to the getsetup.io website and register directly for classes. And that way I can really answer your questions in real time. Um, get set up, nor I am paid to promote specific products, but know that in the craft world, I can't help but share the products I know and love. I just wanna make sure that you understand that no one is paying me or get set up to talk about my favorite products. So uh, I'm not promoting anything specifically. I'm just sharing things that have worked for me. Um, we're a small class today. So if you would like to, um, if you would like to ask questions today, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or, um, or you can type it in the chat box. Um, and either, either I or Victor, who is my TA today, will make sure that one of us catches your questions. Um, Victor is my uh, teaching slash technical assistant, and I'm glad to have him on board today. Did you want to say good morning, Victor? Hi, everyone. Good morning. Enjoy the session. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. So this is what we're going to be covering. We're going to be covering what the parts of a crochet pattern are. We're going to be covering um, how to understand rounds, rows, and stitches. And when I think in terms of rounds, rows, and stitches, this to me can look like some sort of code that needs to be broken, right? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to break the mystery of understanding a crochet pattern. And then we'll look at the finishing part of a pattern and how to, to understand how to finish your uh, pattern off when you get done. 
And then at the very end, we'll spend a little bit of time, if we have time, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about um, uh, understanding and choosing yarns. So are there any questions on the agenda or is there anything specific that you're hoping I'll cover? Maybe a particular stitch that you're trying to do or a particular problem that you're having with a pattern? What, what are you looking for today? Vicki? I'm just happy you're, I've discovered this because I've just started the very beginnings of crocheting after I probably did it as a child a long time ago my mother was very good at crocheting and I've now she can't do it anymore so I've inherited all her lovely needles but I a church group invited in our my new church invited me in and it was funny because I'm like well I don't know how to crochet or knit so so I have now crocheted a lovely little strip yeah. but I'm definitely at the point where I don't I look at these patterns and I want to start a beginning pattern but I'm like it's a little intimidating so yeah. that's why yeah. I'm here so you resonated with the part where I said it's like breaking a code. Exactly. That's yes. why I was nodding my head. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, good morning, Denise. Good morning, Maya. I don't can't remember. I don't know if I said hi to Valerie, but welcome, everyone. Um, yeah. what, what questions might you have uh, about our agenda or any specific questions or comments on crocheting before I before I move ahead? I'm like Vicki. I'm just starting. I crocheted many, many years ago. And now I'm just picking it back up because of Get Set Up. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm starting to enjoy it. So I just want to get into the ins and outs and the patterns and how to read. and You know, just taking anything I can to learn more about crocheting. Sounds like you're in the right spot. Anyone else? Valerie, what are you thinking? Well, I crocheted as a child. My mother taught me also, but we never did patterns. So I never learned how to um, read a pattern. And so that's what I'm looking forward to, learning how to okay. read it. Great, great. Anyone else? All right. So uh, what I've listed on this page are what I would consider some of the most common abbreviations. And I'm gonna send you a link. When we get all done, I'm gonna send you a link. So don't feel like you have to copy all of this down uh, right now. Um, so if you're you know, in the class with me, um, you'll get an email when we're done and it will include some links to a lot of the things that I'm covering today in the class. So these are the common abbreviations. That being said, there are tons and tons of abbreviations. Um, and I, I, I think one of the things that scares people when they're trying to understand reading a pattern is how would I ever memorize all of these? And the answer is you don't need to, okay? Um, you, but if you know some of the common ones, if you recognize them when you see them, you'll be able to crochet more quickly. Okay, because you won't have to be looking everything up when you're trying to do it. So I want to just talk about what some of these common abbreviations are, and then we're going to look at some patterns. So um, the, the foundation row is all, almost always done with a chain stitch, and the chain is usually abbreviated CH. Sometimes you'll see CHS, but most frequently you'll see CH for chain, and it might say CH space 20. That means you're gonna chain 20 stitches. And then remember, when you chain 20, that always counts that initial slip stitch that you put on. So you, you do your slip stitch and then you, you're gonna do 19 more chains to get a total of 20. And then you don't count the one that's on your crochet hook. SLST is slip stitch. Um, and I'm, I am in the process, I haven't got it, because of the grandbabies that I've had in the last couple of weeks, I haven't developed my intermediate class yet, but I'm going to do an intermediate class. In the, in the um, initial class, I taught the single crochet um, stitch. So if you're interested in some basics of crochet, hop on over to my Learn to Crochet class, which I think I'm teaching again uh, next week. Um, and I get through how to do a slip stitch, how to do a chain foundation, how to do the single crochet stitch, how to count your rows and your stitches, how to end your work and weave in your ends. 
Um, and um, the next intermediate would cover, for example, the slip stitch, the double crochet, the treble crochet, and maybe how to read some specialized stitches. So um, that's where you might see a slip stitch um, in, in the Get Set Up classes. SC is the abbreviation for single crochet, HDC for half double crochet, DC for double crochet, and TC for treble or triple crochet. Now, if you can't wait <laughs> for my class next week, um, these four stitches right here, along with the chain for the foundation, these four stitches make up the bulk of all crocheting patterns. Everything is a variation. Everything else is a variation of these four stitches. So if you can master the chain, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and treble crochet, you can get almost everything. Um, and you know, there's some great YouTube videos out there on how to do each one of these stitches, but those four are, are, the, are the basics. Um, and then INC and DEC are increase and decrease, and they're abbreviated like this. Um, turn, it'll tell you turn. You'll see turn in the um, instructions. What that means is when you're doing rows, you're going to turn it and work the other direction. Um, join in, uh, might mean to connect two stitches together. You see this a lot. Um, like I do this a lot in dowel clothes, for example, where I might start the neck going back and forth because I'm gonna put a little button at the top of the back of the dress, for example, and you go down so far and then you join it so that from then on you're continuing in a round. So you start out in rows, but transfer to a round. That's where you might see join. Another spot you might see join is if you're sewing, or sorry, crocheting squares, and it'll say join two squares together with a, and it'll oftentimes tell you the kind of stitch to use. And REP is the abbreviation for repeat. Do you have any questions on these specific common abbreviations? Any questions on these? So these are the ones, if you were gonna try to remember anything, these are the ones that I would, I would recommend. Um, that, that if you can get these in your brain, It'll, it'll be a good day in a crochet pattern. Sarah? Yes, Vicki. I noticed that there, there were some English, isn't there like an English, an American or something sometimes yeah. in patterns? Yes, yeah. yeah. so the um, UK or European patterns, um, you, if you get one of those, you need to know that it's a European pattern. And I don't know uh, how you exactly would identify it, but what they'll say is they're, their double crochet is our single crochet. Um, so now a clue, Vicki, would be that if it's giving you your needle sizes in millimeters only, and if it's giving you your, um, your uh, yarn in, uh, what would it be, grams, I think, and in meters, that's a clue that you've got a European pattern. Um, because they tend to work in, in those numbers. And so that's a clue right at the top of the pattern that might tell you that. Um, uh, personally, it's for me, it's such a transition um, to think about learning a whole new set of, 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 of abbreviations that I've avoided the UK patterns, but it's good to be able to recognize them. And you could make that transition pretty easily, I think. So what I'm sharing with you today, and I'm going to send you the link to this pattern, is uh, it's called the, right here is the title. It's called the Red Heart Checkerboard Textures Crochet Throw. Um, and um, let me tell you why I chose this. So if you look at it, you'll see that there are lots of different rectangles, I'm sorry, squares that have been sewn together to make this afghan. So I picked this to share with you. Um, it's a relatively, uh, it's got a lot of pages in the pattern. But what I liked about it is if you wanted to practice some different stitches, this gives you a variety of stitches that you could practice. Um, and the other thing is, is let's say that you saw this square right here and you said, oh my gosh, I love that stitch pattern. You can make that into a dishcloth um, by, by putting about 40 stitches on, a, on your, uh, 40 chains on your hook, or you can make it into a blanket by doing about 150 or so. 
So, um, you know, it's got some applications that way. Now, I think from looking at this pattern, what we've got is we've got 10 squares that are the same, like 10 blocks that are identical. And then there's 10 blocks that are completely different from one another. So that's what's included in this pattern. This was free online at the Yarnspirations website. Um, and when I look at a pattern, I look at the title, which is right here. And Red Heart is, if you bought any yarn in your lifetime, you know, Red Heart is a common dealer of yarns. If you go into like Walmart, uh, into their yarn section, they often carry the Red Heart yarns. Um, and, um, and so that's, that's, that's the reason that this is given away free is because they want you to use their yarn. Um, and then it's gonna tell you the pattern difficulty. So this particular pattern, um, uses it tells you right here that it's going to use a size four yarn, which is an average size yarn. We'll talk more about the size of the yarn at the end. Um, it's telling you that it's a crochet pattern, and it's telling you that the skill level is intermediate. Now, uh, hang with me because I'm going to be telling you some things that you, that are going to you're going to say, "Why are you telling me this?" I'm going to tell you this because you're going to need it to go to the next step. But what's in this pattern is some of the blocks, are, the blocks are all uh, rated with difficulty and many of the blocks are easy. So though they say it's an intermediate Afghan, many of the blocks within it are easy to do. Another thing that I always look for is, is there a section that's going to tell me the abbreviations and what they mean? Because this is why you don't have to memorize everything. OK, so what I like about this particular the yarn inspirations is they tend to be for all crocheters, no matter what your level is. They've got something for everyone. What I like about their patterns is they break them down and they'll tell you CH means chain or chains. Um, not every pattern tells you the basics, but yarn inspirations does. Then if you get down to here, like if I look at DCBP, uh, well, actually, I've crocheted long enough now that I know that that's double crochet uh, in a back post. But it's going to tell you how to do that stitch written out. And so when you get to that abbreviation in the pattern and you go, oh, my gosh, what is this telling me? You go back to your abbreviations or sometimes this section is called special stitches and you look at how to do that. And it tells you step by step. So one of the things that I've learned over the years is I don't open a pattern, look at it and go, oh, my gosh, I could never do this because I can't picture step four before I've done step one. I don't have that ability. Um, but what I've learned over the years is if I if I figure out step one, I'm ready for step two. And if I figure out step two, I'm ready for step three. So, so try to keep yourself from getting overwhelmed out of the gate. Um, if you break it down step by step, and sometimes section of a direction by section of a, a section of a step by section of a step, you're going to get it. So um, don't don't get scared. Um, give yourself give yourself some grace to work it through one step at a time. So all of these abbreviations and special stitches are here. If you buy a pattern book. Sometimes those abbreviations or special stitches are at the beginning of the book, and you have to refer back to the beginning um, to figure these out. But that's a, a good book. We'll have all of that, and sometimes pictures too. Now, a tip that I've got for you is if you say uh, yarn over hook, that's what Y O H is yarn over hook. A lot of times you'll just see that as a Y O. So I'm looking at this D C F P yarn over hook and draw up a loop around the post of the next stitch at the front of the work, inserting hook from right to left. Now, if I look at that and that does not make sense to me, I will go out and I will Google DCFP. I always put the word crochet after it because I don't want some uh, uh, abbreviation for some other field to pop up. And then I'll look at a video. And you can often see in a video how to do it. I, I'll tell you, I made a beautiful, it, it covers my whole bed. It's a crocheted, Afghan and it was called the Prairie Star or something like that. And it had diamonds in it. And I, it, it had a join with crocheting that I could not for the life of me figure out. And I just loved the pattern. And I Googled the name of the pattern 
and found a YouTube video on it. And so that's how I was able to take that next step um, with that pattern when I was all by myself at home in my living room without, without a friend to call that might be able to help me with that. So the other thing that I want to tell you about this section is that I've seen it organized two ways. You can see right here that this one, this section is organized alphabetically, which makes it real easy if you're in the middle of a pattern to go back and find the stitch that it's talking about. The other way, and I tend to like the other way a little bit better, is you'll see it organized in the order that it's introduced in the pattern. So for example, if you're gonna chain, if the first thing you're gonna do is chain, chain would be at the top of the list. If the second thing you were gonna do is single crochet a foundation row, single crochet would be the next thing in the list. And it, and it, might, be, it might be ordered in the way it's introduced in the pattern. So that's just, a, that's just a, um, another way some people organize it. Okay. Uh, any questions on that section? I covered a lot in that section. Any questions in that section? Okay. All right. Next section that's on here is the materials that you need to complete this project. And what I like to tell people is if it's at all possible, get all the materials you need at the same time. And that's because yarn is made in dye lots, D-Y-E, dye lots. Um, and what happens is they put, you know, your vat of your dyeing liquid in a big, huge tub and they dye all of the yarn at the same time using a recipe, much like you would do a can, a can of paint at the, at the paint store. Um, and sometimes what happens is if you don't buy all of your yarn out of that same dye lot, the lot is the number assigned to that vat, you can get shade variations. And so I've had, I've, um, bought yarn before for afghans and I've gotten two thirds of the way through it and I've run out of yarn and I've gone back and especially if the if it's a solid color like the one that I that comes freshly to my mind was this beautiful um it was like a red wine color um afghan and I got about two thirds of the way through it and the next dye lot that I got because I couldn't match it was like a slightly redder version and I mean I just I think it probably, I, I made it for one of my kids and I think it's probably sitting in a goodwill at this point <laughs> because they just couldn't stand that color variation and it made me frustrated as well. So if you can buy all of it at one time, try to do that. <clears throat> so this is telling you that this Afghan is using Red Heart Soft. That's the name of the yarn and it comes in a five ounce skein and each skein has 256 yards in it. That's what that's telling you there, okay? What, why that's important is if you wanted to trade it out for a different kind of yarn, you would need to know how many balls of another kind of yarn to do and you'd have to do the math uh, to come up with that. They used light gray heather. You could use any color you wanted, but if you want it to look just like theirs, that's what they used. And you would need 13 balls of the Red Heart Soft. Um, and then it's telling you that the other thing that you need to complete this project is your, your hooks. So a G or a six or a four millimeter hook uh, for the granny squares. And then um, all the other squares. So granny squares are worked in the round. The other squares that are in here use a size F or a five or a 3.75 millimeter hook. And those are done in rows back and forth. And then it also says, or the size you need to obtain the gauge. Now in an Afghan, no big deal if your Afghan's a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, unless that matters to you a lot, like you're trying to get it to fit a specific bed, for example. Um, so, you know, or it might use a little bit more yarn if you're a loose crocheter, but where it really matters is in if you're crocheting clothing, like I crochet doll clothes, use, and I'm a loose crocheter. So I know from years of doing crochet that I need to go down at least one hook size and sometimes two to get the correct gauge because I'm a loose crocheter. If you're a tight crocheter, you need to go up a hook size or two. Um, so if the gauge is important, um, you want to um, you want to try run a gauge. And this is actually going to tell us how to gauge in a second here. It's telling us the measurements. Our, of the finished product is 47 by 57. And here's your gauge. 
It's telling us that if you do a granny square, which was using that size G hook, that it should end up 10 inches square. If you do it and it ends up 11 or 12 inches square, you may wanna go down a hook size or two. If you do it and it ends up being nine inches square, you may wanna go up a hook size or two. Um, that's, that's where the gauge is. That's what the gauge is telling you. Um, and then um, it's telling you here, what I told you in the beginning when I was pointing to the picture, the throw is made from 20 squares. 10 of them are the same granny square. And then there's one each of the textures. So let's just do a little quiz for a little bit of fun. If I said to you, um, how do you do a shell stitch? Could you find that on here? Yep, I'm seeing some nods. Yes, if you wanna do a thumbs up, if you don't have your camera on, you can do that. Or if you wanna say yes in the chat box, you can do that too. All right, if I said to you, how much yarn do you need to complete this project? Could you tell me the answer to that question? You can unmute yourself and shout it out too, if you want to. 13 balls. 13 balls. What kind of yarn are you gonna buy if you want it to be exactly like the picture? Red Heart Soft. Red Heart Soft, exactly. In the light gray heather. Yep, in the light gray heather. Good, great. Um, what, uh, what size crochet hook might you have to use for this pattern? You need a size um, six and a size five. Nice, nice, perfect, thank you. All right, so do you feel like you're a little bit oriented to what this page is telling you? Okay, we're gonna go on to page two. This was page two of the pattern. And it, um, it tells us a little bit more in general right here. So it says each granny square is worked and joined in turned rounds. So turned rounds are unusual. That means you're gonna do a round turn and go the other way. Turned rounds are a little bit unusual. It's gonna tell us what it did. To work in the round, it's giving you some more instructions, and then it's going to tell you, and a lot of times you'll see this. I, I didn't figure this out until a long time uh, into my crocheting, um, but chain three at the beginning of a double crochet row is often counted as the first double crochet, unlike a single crochet. So if you're going to start a new row of single crochet, you chain one, that does not count as the initial single crochet. The first actual single crochet is what counts. But in a double crochet, in almost every pattern I've ever seen, a chain three counts as the first double crochet. So why that's important is if you didn't count that as your first double crochet, your work would get wider and wider and wider and wider, right? So it's important to know and understand that piece of it. Okay, then the other thing, so then it's gonna tell you, this is how you work this square step by step. And we're gonna look at some instructions in a minute. We're not gonna look at these right now. Um, but remember I said some of the squares are easy and some are intermediate. This granny square tells you this is an easy square. So if you're a beginner crocheter and you wanted to try an easy one, and this first textured square over here, this number one textured square, is also an easy one. Um, these would be some good ones to start with, right? Um, it also tells you the gauge um, on these, on each one of the squares, which I like. Um, and also you'll notice that there's a picture of what each completed square looks like. I have seen patterns that don't include pictures and it's kind of like working with one hand behind your back, or it's kind of like, uh, shooting darts at a dartboard, but not having your center point marked. You don't quite know what you're shooting for. So I like it when there's photos and I can know what my finished work looks like. What questions might you have on this page? I don't have a question, but this is the pages that scare me when I look at them. Okay, and we're gonna try, yes, and we're gonna try to break it down a little bit. One of the things like one that catches my eye right away is let's look at this fourth round right here. See, it says chain three, period. I love it that they use a period. A lot of times it'll be just a comma. I love it that they use a period because what that tells me is you have chain three on this row, on this fourth round, and you're and and now you move on. The period tells you you're done, move on. Okay. 
Then it tells you, and that chain three, what do we know about that chain three from this instruction over here? It's our first double crochet. It's your first it's double crochet. crochet. It's good, it's great. It's that Good job, you're listening. Okay. And then it says two double crochet in the first chain one space. So it's telling you in the next chain one space from that from round three, in the first space, you're gonna two, do two double crochets. So, and then look, there's that period. I love that. I love the periods way more than the commas. I wish that was a standard. And then you're gonna chain one and there's another period. Now here's where you start to get into repeats and I'm not gonna keep going with this fourth round because I wanna talk about that later in a minute. But that's, that's really, when you start to break it down that simply, like I can chain three, right? And there's a period, I can chain three, I just did that. Oh, I can do two double crochet in the first chain space from the row before. Once you start breaking it down that simply and that step by step, pretty soon you've worked that entire round and you go, oh my gosh, I just did it. <laughs> so it's a great, it's a great thing. And you can master this. All right, this is the last page of this uh, particular um, pattern. And I wanted to uh, skip to this last page um, because it has a few things on it at the end that you need to be familiar with. It usually, uh, most patterns give you some kind of finishing instruction. This one tells you to arrange your squares in the assembly diagram and that's over here. Here's your assembly diagram. So it says, here's where your square one goes. And then you're going to put a granny square next to it. Here's where your square two is. You're going to put a granny square next to it. And that's how you're going to sew uh, your squares together. There's also a way that you can um, crochet your squares together. Um, I, uh, I always have to look that up every time I do it. Um, sewing it together is a little bit easier for me. But this one says, sew it together through the front loops. Um, so that's helpful. And then it gives you the instructions for crocheting a border around the whole thing. I also wanted to add that this is not, this, this chart over here is not a part of this pattern, but I wanted to tell you that some people learn to crochet from charts and don't ever crochet from the written instructions. Um, and, um, it's a different, it's a little bit different skill set. Um, and so I, so like, for example, I know enough to know that when I see this right here, that that's telling me that I need to chain three. And I think this is either a double, I think this is a double crochet, but each one of these symbols stands for something different. And you can find whole patterns that are done this way. Uh, filigree, filigree, uh, crochet is often done like this and it's thread crochet um, and it's often done with charts. We're not going to cover that in this uh, in this course, but just know that if you think that you would like to do it from a chart more than you'd like to do it from written instructions, the charts are out there as a possibility. What questions might you have at this point on kind of like, so that what I just covered was like understanding the pattern as a whole. And our next step is going to be to break down rows and and uh, and stitches. Um, what questions might you have so far? No questions. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So following the instruction pattern, now we're going to zero in to the instruction portion of a pattern. And it's a and what a couple points that you need to remember is most patterns assume you know to start with a slip knot and that that slip knot counts as your first chain. So that's just kind of a given. It doesn't always tell you that. And then um, you're going to follow the steps of the pattern in chronological or numerical order. So um, you, it's going to say row one, row two, etc. But it does not always say row one. It might just say R one. Um, and then um, you're going to have a foundation chain row. So, or sometimes what you might see is you might see chain. Oh, the one I was working on the other day was chain eight and then join it together in a circle. That's how I was going to begin that particular granny square. And then it's going to tell you whether you're going to be working in rounds or rows. 
Um, and then at, when you get all done, after you followed all those instructions, you wanna, you wanna look at those finishing instructions. So this is an example of a square that's worked in rows. Here's your row one all the way through your row nine. And here's an example of something that might be worked in rounds. Um, this one happens to stay circular. I've done this, for example, I made a planter cover um, and the bottom of the planter cover looked like this. And then when I got to the edge of the planter, I kept my stitches the same and that allowed me to work all the way straight up the sides without getting bigger and bigger. Um, or in a granny square, you'll often see rounds um, and, it, and you start out with round and eventually it, it you end up with this square and it's the way they design the stitches. So rows versus rounds you need to be aware of when you pick up a pattern. All right, so here's dishcloth number one. Um, and we're gonna go through this kind of step by step. So this one required one ball of Lily sugar and cream, 100% cotton, which I, I love for um, dishcloths. And I like dishcloths for practice um, because they're a good way to get started without getting in over your head, but still having something you can use when you get done. Um, and I'm gonna send you this, I'll send you this pattern when we get done. And it tells us that we also need an H hook or a five millimeter crochet hook. Again, I wouldn't worry about gauging with this one um, because it's a dishcloth, right? Um, so the abbreviations, it tells us the abbreviations are YO for yarn over, CH for the chain stitch, SC for single crochet, and SK for skip. So it tells us right, right away what abbreviations there are. Not a lot of special stitches in this one, just some abbreviations. So we start by chain 36, CH 36. And then in row one, what this is telling us, and see that, there's that row one abbreviated R1, single crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So you've done your foundation row, now you're gonna go into that fourth chain from the hook, and there's a comma. I would like this better if it was a period, but it's a comma. So what it's telling us is we're done with that part, we're ready to go on to the next section. Now what I want you to notice is the asterisk. This is where patterns can get really tricky. So I love how this particular pattern creator created this pattern because she starts with the asterisk and she ends with a semicolon. So what this tells us is this is where this section of the row starts and this is where the section of the row ends. So what she's telling us is after you've single crocheted in the fourth chain from the hook, you're gonna chain one, you're gonna skip the next stitch from the row below and you're gonna single crochet in the next stitch from the row below. So chain one, remember that was a general, you common abbreviation, chain one. SK was skip, common abbreviation. ST, stitch, comma, single crochet in the next stitch, semicolon. Okay, and then what, and then what she says is repeat from the asterisk to the end of the row, ending with a single crochet in the last chain, chain two in turn. So everything that's between this asterisk and this semicolon is repeated over and over and over again to the end of the row. Does that, does that make sense? Do you have questions on that? Because this, like, this is like a key to unbreaking the code. All right, so the other way that you might see this rather than an asterisk is you might see a bracket here and a bracket here and it'll say just repeat to the end of the row ending with a single crochet in the last chain. So it's assuming that you understand when you see the brackets that what's within those brackets is the part that you're going to repeat. Okay so let's go on. Well let me stop. Any questions on row one? Sounds simple. Sounds simple, right? And you wish I was sitting next to you when you try it, right? <laughs> okay, row two. Oh, sorry. Did not mean to do that. Okay, row two. Single crochet in the chain space from the row below. Then there's that asterisk again. Chain one. Skip one single crochet from the row below. 
single crochet in the next chain one space from the row below. So do you hear me saying from the row below? That's kind of the inferred part of this sentence is, um, is that you're, so I, so I'm an educator, right? I like to think about it as verb in the noun or the action in the place. This is what, this is how I try to, when I was trying to break it down so a learner could understand, I think of it as verb in a noun or action in a place. So let's look at that again. Chain one is your action. Skip one single crochet. That's an action, skipping a single crochet from the row below. And then single crochet, that's an action in the next place, chain one space from the row below. So I, that helps me. I don't know if that helps you or confuses you, but that helps me because when I was, when I was really thinking about this, explaining this to someone who didn't know anything about crochet, I thought, gosh, these are really like two parts to the same instruction, the what and the where. Um, okay, and then it tells us to repeat from that asterisk until the end of the row. One of the things I like about this particular instruction is um, this one where it says until the end of the row, you know that if you get to the end of the row and you're ending with a single crochet and a chain one space, you're in the right spot. If you're if you're if you get to the end of the row and you don't have a spot to crochet in, you know you did something wrong and you need to back up. Um, and so it tells us it further instructions: the last single crochet is worked in the space between the chain two turn, turning chain and the single crochet from the row before. This is very specific. Patterns are not always this lovely. This is very specific. You should be able to when you get to this spot see that you're actually in the right spot and then you're gonna chain two and turn. And then you're just going to repeat row two until you have 34 rows or the dishcloth is square. Um, so if you're a very tight crochet or 34 rows might have give you a rectangle instead of a, instead of a square. So you're gonna to wanna to just check it and see if it's square at that point. You can do that, uh, you can do that by, uh, measuring or you can also do it by just folding it corner to corner to see if it's square and then you're going to cut the yarn and weave in ends. Questions on this dishcloth patterns. We've got two more that I'm going to try to move through relatively quickly. <clears throat> um, so we talked about repeating the steps where there's an asterisk. We talked about that in detail in that last pattern and just remember that the brackets can replace the asterisk. So in this case, it would be a bracket here and a bracket here where the semicolon is. And it says repeat. Re and it would just say repeat to last three stitches. So keep that in your mind. Asterisk for brackets mean the same thing. Um, if you're wondering, here's a couple tips on tracking uh, stitches. Um, I like to, especially when I'm beginning something, I note my stitches at the end of each row. I count them. A lot of patterns. If you get to the end of the row and it's got uh, parentheses with a number in it, it's telling you how many stitches you should have in that row. I love it when they do that because you know every row whether you're in the right, whether you've done the right thing or not. Not all pattern makers do that. Um, if if I if it's like the same pattern, like let's say I'm single crocheting every single row and it's and I've got it down pat, I might check every ten rows or so. Uh, always, you know, feel free to backtrack if you need to. Crochet is such an easy uh, thing to rip. Um, you can get markers if you want to. I oftentimes make a copy of my pattern and just use tally marks and a pencil rather than messing with a, with a gadget. Um, I keep saying, look at finishing steps at the end of the project. I'm not quite sure why. I must have thought that was really important when I was doing this. <laughs> um, here's a picture of dishcloth number two. Um, and we're going to start moving a little bit more quickly. So it tells you what supplies you need in this box. It tells your abbreviations. Here's a crazy one, HVDC. I looked at that and I thought, I have no clue what HVDC is. And she says, oh, that's the herringbone double crochet. Well, I still didn't know what that meant. But I noticed that under here, she added special stitch. Herringbone double crochet is... Yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull back through, do it 
and you look at that and you go, I can never do that. You might be surprised if you start it by looking at yarn over, right? There's that comma. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull it back through. I bet you can do it. And remember, if you look at it with these words and you still don't know what it means, Google it. But make sure you put crochet with it so you don't get some crazy response. She's telling you that this dishcloth is going to turn out about 13 and a half by 13 and a half. She uses color A and color B um, for indications of changing colors. So what her uh, dishcloth is, is the main body of the dishcloth was yellow and the border was orange. That's, that's what that's telling us. So with your main color or your color A, you're going to do that fancy stitch first in the third chain from the hook. And you're going to repeat that. No, look at, she skipped her, uh, she skipped her punctuation. And I, and it's like, oh, that's not great for a beginner. But I put this in here because you have to know that you might have to assume that there's a comma there and then repeat that until the end of the chain, chain three and turn, you should have 34 stitches. And then she's telling you, you're gonna do that herringbone crochet stitch in the first herringbone double crochet from the row before. And you're gonna repeat that. And then it tells you, you're just gonna repeat that same stitch over and over again until you get to the end. And then she tells you how to put your border on. Questions on this pattern. Uh, this is just cloth three. The skill level is easy. It tells you all of your materials that you need. It tells you your, your finished size. It tells you how you can gauge this one. It tells you your abbreviations. And, and here it's telling us in row one, color A, starting in the second chain from the hook, single crochet. And then single crochet in every chain across turn. And here's that parentheses with the number. You should have 20 single crochets when you get done with this row. And then she's telling you what to do in row two. She's telling you what to do in row three. And then she's telling you that you're going to repeat row one. You're going to repeat row one. You're going to repeat row two. And that's where tracking with tally marks and, and uh, sometimes I, I'll use a uh, like a check mark. And then each time I repeat it, I'll put a little hash mark on my, or a little tally mark on my check mark. And that's how I keep track of where I am in the pattern. Uh, questions, do you, when you look at this, can you read it? Does anybody wanna try taking a stab at reading any portion of this? Any idea what BL means? right here, so right here in row three, half double crochet in the BL of the stitch from row one. Anybody know what BL is? Back loop, right. So when you look at the top of your chain, you're just doing it in the back part of the, and that leaves a real nice line on the front. That's real pretty, I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Uh, so, Sarah, on the dishcloth that, that we started, I'm not yes. done yet. Crocheting class. Uh, yes. Um, which which pattern was that? It was none of those. What oh, I actually, no, no. Okay. I actually created that one, Denise, because um, because everything I found was too complicated for a beginning class. So that one was just single crochet every stitch every row. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say it had like thirty five stitches. So every row you should have, thir whatever I had said, 33 or 35, whatever that was in there. That's, okay. yeah, every row should have that number of single crochets. And I didn't okay. border on that one either. Okay, thank so, you. Great question. Um, when you get done uh, finishing, you're gonna weave in your ends. I like to do that with a tapestry needle. Um, you can do it with your crochet hook. Um, but if it says you need to block your square or you need to block your, uh, your work, what it's talking about is what you can see in this picture right here. I like to pin to, uh, sometimes I use a carpet in my living room, to be honest. I don't use a fancy board at all, um, but I use T-pins. So this is a regular sewing pin with a little round head on it. I like to use T-pins. What a T-pin 
is if you can see my finger at all, is it's a, it looks like a sewing pin, but it's got a crossbar on the top that says about, it's quite wide. And that keeps your yarn from, or your work from popping off. So I like the T-pins when I block. Um, make sure you read your label of your yarn before you do this. But two of the techniques that they talked about when I was uh, researching this was steaming with a steamer or steam with a steam iron, but you don't touch the yarn. Um, you would hold it just above. Another way you can do it is you can spray it with a bottle of water, or you can make a, like a, another dishcloth wet and lay it on top and let it dry. And you let it dry flat. And when it's all the way dry, then you remove your pins and keep going. That a lot of times crocheting is not quite as bad as knitting. In knitting, a lot of times when you get done, your edges curl, that stops that so you can sew it together more easily. So that's what it's talking about with blocking. Uh, let me give you an example though. If you were using acrylic yarn, like red heart acrylic yarn and you, and you put your iron down on it, it's gonna melt it. So don't touch it with your iron. <laughs> I know that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking, if you're online, I, every time I prep for one of these classes, I go online looking for great patterns to share with you guys. And I, I tell you, it's like a two or three hour search because I have so much fun doing it. But if you're looking for some good uh, beginner projects for reading a simple pattern, Google free crochet patterns. And then put in what you want to make, like a scarf or a blanket or a placemat or a table runner or a wall hanging or a pillow cover or a dishcloth. And you're going to find a lot of times they'll say they'll say we'll send you the PDF of the pattern if you uh, give us your email. I, I do that quite frequently, and then I get some neat emails. And when I get tired of hearing from them, I just unsubscribe, and um, and and that's been a lot of fun. Um, there's some great uh, spots on Facebook as well. Okay, we've got five minutes left. I have to go into- uh, Fair, oh, are you going yeah. to put that in the notes? I'll put that. Which part? Uh, you where part? Um, you can get the free- um, I'll, I'll, yes, project. I can put that in there. Thank, I don't normally, but I will today since you asked. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. yes. Okay, here's that uh, thing I was telling you about, about the sizes of the yarn. If you walked into a Walmart, most of their yarn is going to be in this four category. But now the real thick yarns are popular. That would be a seven. And the lace is almost like crochet thread. Um, and I'm going to send you a I'm going to send you this link so that you can get to this chart. Um, know that there are three general categories of yarn. There's animal fibers, which are your wools. Those are a lot of people are allergic to the animal fibers. So be careful of that if you have trouble with your skin. Uh, plant fibers, my favorite one right now is bamboo. Oh my gosh, even bamboo is a blend. Um, adds the most, the softest element to the yarn. I just love it. Your synthetic or your acrylics. Um, and know that you can get blends of all of these and it's important to read your labels. Here's an example of all different kinds of yarn. Mm -hmm. um, there is, you walk into a yarn shop and it's like, oh my gosh, how do I ever find what I need? Mm -hmm. um, and the key is learning how to read your label, right? So here's that key for the size of the yarn. That four is describing how thick the yarn is, how thick a strand of yarn is. That's what that four is describing. It's also going to tell you how many ounces are on there. So you know how much to buy to complete a project. It's going to tell you how many yards or meters there are. It's going to tell you your content. This one's 90% acrylic and 10% alpaca. It's going to tell you your laundry instructions. And that's where you're going to want to make sure, like if, you, if it was 100% wool, non-treated, and you steam it, it's going to shrink. If you put it in the dryer, it's going to shrink. So, you know, you have to know what your, know what your content is. And then it also tells you how to gauge it out, which is what I was explaining to you earlier. Um, it's, it's, it's telling you right here in crocheting that a J hook with 12 single crochets and 15 rows should be four by four. And that tells you that you're on the right track with that yarn or how to adjust if you need to. I'm gonna skip the storage. Here's our resources that I'm gonna be sending you um, to tell you um, some ideas. And then I'll include that other thing that you asked for there, Denise. 
Um, and I want to thank you. We're at, I've got two minutes left. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for participating with me. Um, you can email Liz at getsetup.io if you have feedback in general. Um, I am also teaching Learn to Knit and Learn to Crochet. Um, later this week, I'm teaching calligraphy and brush lettering, finding and sharing fun things on Pinterest. I te I've got my knitting uh, reading patterns launched now. Um, and as soon as I get home from visiting grand, I had two granddaughters born within 24 hours of each other last week. Um, wow. Yeah, and they were due five weeks apart. So, and they're in two different cities, of course. Uh, yeah. five, five and a half hours apart. So <laughs> it's been a rolling couple of weeks. Um, if you get the notes after class, if you scroll down, you're going to see the give feedback button. And if you and if you click on that, you can rate the session content. You can rate me. Um, you can add comments and you can give us general comments. Um, I read every bit of feedback I ever get. And um, there's a, a man at Get Set Up who does too and sends any comments upstream that might uh, help future uh, projects. So, um, and always feel free to invite a friend. All right, I'm gonna stop my share at this point and I'm gonna, uh, we've got about one minute left. I wonder if there's any last questions or comments or what you'd like to maybe see me do next or what would have been more helpful to you today? This was very helpful. It was a Good. lot to take in, so I have, I'll definitely be reviewing it and uh, follow, following up on the materials. But thank you, Sarah. Great. Very good teaching. Do you think you could get it? Do you think you could do it, Vicki? Are you ready to get yeah, it? Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, okay, I think yeah. I can. I'm going to start pretty basic, but. Yeah. Yeah. Denise, I, I, I think eventually. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. I'll get it. I, I do know back I, from a little bit of marketing, I, I must have had a marketing class somewhere back in my history. They said a person has to hear it an average of seven times before it mm. sinks in. Okay. So if you have watched this whole thing and you say, this is still clear as mud, come back, you know, join me again. I, I'd love to have you back with me. So. All right. I enjoyed everyone in the class. Everyone yeah, you, you're, okay. you've been a great group. I've really enjoyed you. Valerie and Irene and Mia and Margaret. It is, Denise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Excellent class. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Do you think you can try it? You, are you oh, great? Definitely. Oh, good. Definitely. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. All right, Mia, I see your thumbs up. Thank you. All right, everyone, you just have a wonderful day. I hope to see you in another class sometime soon. You will. Bye. All right. Bye.